So, in the series of Living Legend of Medicine, today we have invited Honorable Professor Dr. Rajeshwari Subramanian Ma'am, who is the ex professor and head of the Department of Anesthesiology and Critical Care at AIMS All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Ma'am is the recipient of National Science Talent Scholarship in 1973. Ma'am has completed her graduation, uh, MBBS graduation from the Lady Harding Medical College. She was a house surgeon in anesthesiology in RML Hospital, Delhi, and joined AIMS again as MD postgraduate. Then headed the department of AIMS from uh, 1st August 2018 to 2022. Uh, the areas of clinical interest include pediatrics, obstetrics, endocrine, low flow anesthesia, anesthesia and environmental stewardship. There are a lot of contributions which ma'am has added to our nation, to our society, to games and to this, uh, uh, this community. Ma'am has reduced the disposable plastic syringe use by nearly 20% in the last 5 years in the OR. Initiated the development of code blue training at games. As a faculty in charge of B.B. Dixit Library, ma'am has increased uh, library journal subscription in the last four years from 800 to more than 1800 journals now. The index publications accredited to ma'am are more than 130, uh, including more than 80 international journals and more than 50 national journals. Also, ma'am is a renowned author of a textbook, A Primer of Anesthesia, which is for undergraduates published by the JV Publishers. Ma'am was a former treasurer at RSACP, former editor at ISA Newsletter, President ISA Daily Branch, member of the ISA, RSAP, ISCCM, AOA, IARS and SOAP. Also ma'am was the organizing secretary of ISEA 2013 and she uh, has headed, uh, she, she headed and delivered talks at various conferences and CMEs which, which are in number more than 150. A professor man for his own and for his own, she is to be the recognition of the medicine and it's my honor to welcome ma'am over here and now I would like to humbly request ma'am to please come on the stage to deliver ma'am to welcome for his own and for his own. Required to then become a good practitioner in that particular field. 
So that is exactly what happened to me. So um, in my undergraduation, that is the third semester, we were not yet to the operation period. Have you, which, how many of you are in the third semester or above that? Which semesters are you? Older or younger? I think they are not wanting to answer. Okay, how many first semesters? How many second? Final semesters? Okay, it's a good mixture, I must say. So, how many of you have been in the OT? How many of you have been taken to the OT audition theatre? Only one? I can't imagine. What happened to the others?
by surgery, who can't take care of them, then you are the ones who are going to take care of them through their mechanical ventilation, by giving them blood pressure support, putting them on ECMO, or whatever it requires to save that person. The person could be very young or very old. He may be having COPD, he may be having poisoning, he may be having ARDS, but you are the one who is going to know more and more about it and then finally take him on the road to them. So this covers the operation theatre and the ICU and the critical care. Apart from that, the anesthesiologists are the main practitioners of pain. So pain services and pain clinics are now very much on the increase all our, all over our country. And in other countries, they have already been established, but I am very glad to say that acute pain services and chronic pain services are being practiced in a very big manner in our country. So um, as an example, there is a patient with say cancer pain. Cancer pain is a pain which is very terrifying because cancer pain reminds the patient that he or she is going to die. It's a constant reminder to the patient that there is something inside him or her which is going to shorten his life. So it is very, very important that cancer pain should be taken care of both for human conditions as well as to provide the person a more respectable quality of end of life uh, period. So the cancer pain and other acute and chronic pains are very, very dedicated. You are taught how to manage them. You learn to do your own radiological interventions. You learn to give intraforamical injections. You learn to do your own CT, your MRI, your imaging inside the pain theater. So the pain practice is not only an outpatient practice, Pain practice is done inside the operation table. You may be giving a serial plexus block under image intensifier. And so you learn a lot more about medicine, about anatomy, by being in anesthesia and by pain, by practicing pain. And pain is a very flourishing practice nowadays. After doing your FD anesthesia, you can branch out. Pain fellowships are being offered everywhere. And one can and should and can become a pain specialist or become a critical care specialist, as I said earlier. Then apart from that, anesthesia also sets the stage for becoming a very good super specialist person. Now that means either becoming a cardiac anesthesiologist. Now imagine cardiac, cardiac, uh, cardiac surgery and cardiology have, they've just grown by leaps and bounds. And in our country, in this institution, you have a very, very high level of practice of cardiology and of cardiac surgery. So cardiology and cardiac uh, surgery, they warrant a very different kind of anesthetic management where the person has to have the ultimate knowledge of cardiac physiology, what to give to the patient in order to keep the heart pumping, how to you know, calculate the pump flows when the patient goes on bypass, how to defibrillate the heart, and more or less more, and learn a lot about pacing and other vascular interventions and maneuvers. Learn to do the transesophageal echocardiography to aid the surgeon intraoperatively. The TEs also become a tool in the hands of the anesthesiologist. So cardiac anesthesia is, can be your next step after doing MD anesthesia, which means you'll be one of the best and very, very sought after anesthesiologists in the country. And the same goes for neuro anesthesia, because similarly, neuro anesthesia is out a huge burgeoning field. So you'll be required, your health will be required in managing small babies who have to undergo MRI or CT. Can you imagine a small child who's one month old with a brain tumor, which is already very drowsy, needs anesthesia in a remote place, for before undergoing surgery. So this thing can be done only by a skilled anesthesiologist. There is no neurosurgeon who can come and handle their baby for the MRI. It is as serious as that. This also uh, goes through for other babies, other small infants and mentally challenged people who come for radi radiological uh, uh, investigations. Take for example a child with Down syndrome who comes for an MRI with the stomach is fine. I am sure many of you may have seen children with Down syndrome. Some of them are difficult to manage or children with cerebral palsy. So in order to anesthetize them, you should know what to do and what not to do. Because the MRI suite and the radiology suite are areas which are far away from the operation theater. They are known as remote areas. So if you do one mistake, that's it. You may not have the best of health there. So you have to be very, very resourceful and extremely skilled in order to keep the take the child through carefully through the procedures so that then the next surgical step can be planned for the child. Apart from that, anesthesiologists are involved in um, a lot more activities like the uh, airway management. And as all of you know, we are all identified with the laparoscopy. Anesthesia means laparoscopy and intubation. So there is something called a difficult airway, which means the patient may be difficult to integrate with the standard techniques. So all sorts of airway equipment, which are nowadays video laparoscopes. How many of you have seen video laparoscopes? I can 
don't see any hand actually. So uh, you know what we taught? We use a video language coding, which is an it's a it's an it's an extra tool which is sometimes still replaceable. You can uh, integrate neonates with very different areas, adults with different areas, learn from judges using video language code, and in turn teach the art of error management to people who are paraplegic people who may be going out to the field in order to save people and bring more people alive. And I think there's also involved in the management of trauma. So trauma is again, it's an acute and a very active field where we are given a precious three to four minutes to salvage a situation. So the patient may be having a tension pneumothorax, may be having a hemonothorax, may have had a, may be having BF, or may have had something else which is very but you must know how to handle it and you will be the best person to handle it and stabilize the patient to take the patient on to the secondary survey. So in this way, anesthesia has actually permeated itself into every part of the medical teaching and the training and uh, skill provision and also medical management of the patient. And uh, it is not untrue to say that without anesthesia, you probably cannot run a hospital at all because every branch in every form requires anesthesia. In psychiatry, we require anesthesia. Now, you may be wondering why. So, there is a treatment modality known as electroconvulsive therapy. You may have heard or seen it sometimes. That is uh, consistent of giving, giving a shock to patients who have schizophrenia or other very advanced uh, psychotic diseases. So, nowadays it is mandatory that the shock should be given only under anesthesia and not to a conscious person. So, the anesthesiologist is again involved in managing psychiatric patients also in psychiatry. So in this way, uh, you can see that every case, and including obstetrics. Obstetrics is of course very common because you may all have seen cesarean sections. How many of you have seen cesarean sections? Cesarean sections? No. That's a one person. Okay, fine. So you will be seeing them, no doubt. You will be doing your obstetric guiding posters. So uh, labor pain. If you've seen a woman, woman in labor, it's one of the most excruciating pains. It is equated to amputation of a digit. The pain is so severe. So anesthesiologists provide labor anesthesia in the form of epidural catheters so that labor becomes a painless and a very enjoyable uh, movement for the mother and the baby is delivered nicely without any uh, rapid uh, resolve to cesarean sections. So uh, in this way anesthesia impacts all our teaching and training which we do in the hospital. And uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you would be enthused to take up anesthesia once you do all your clinical rotations because you would see that in all the procedures involved, there's in a quiet corner, there's the anesthesiologist standing with his or her anesthesia machine or birth station and quietly providing the support or sedation which is required during those procedures. So uh, I wish all of you a very uh, healthy and a happy under the admission and you must make sure that you do attend all the rotations very nicely. So that is my earnest request to you because only then and only then you will know whether you are choosing the subject of your choice in case you want to go to this direction. If somebody asks me in the middle of a movie, was the movie good and I leave the movie and go away, I can't say anything. I have to see the movie right at the end in order to say that. Similarly with any clinical posting, it's like a book. Unless if you finish the book, how can you say whether the book was good or not? So please attend all your postings nicely. I think uh, Madam has devised very good quotations for all of you. So from that, the seed will be sown as to which specialty is it that you want to take. And you will start preparing unconsciously in the direction of that specialty so that when you come as a postgraduate into that specialty, whether it is anesthesia or surgery, the faculty will be thrilled to have you. You will be thrilled to be there because you would already know what you are going to be there for. So I wish you all the very best. And thank you for your patient listening. And uh, can you cut short your applause because I think you can't. Thank you.